With at least 80 positive COVID-19 cases right now, a local school district cancels classes to reduce the spread. More than 900 students currently quarantined in the Lebanon district. The school board decided to cancel classes starting tomorrow through September. Just yesterday, the district had 17 new cases with additional students wanting test results. We'll keep you updated on the situation. But the whole mask thing is just ridiculous. It's causing more damage than it is good. We don't see the downside of this. Like, what is, what is the risk? They do it, even if it didn't make a huge difference. What are we losing by trying that? The district will take another look at the mask mandate. In three weeks, we'll let you know what happens. As COVID-19 cases surge across the U.S., especially among unvaccinated Americans, hospitals are being pushed to their limits right now. And a new poll showing that the number of people saying that they're not likely to get a COVID-19 vaccine is declining. The CDC says the hospitalization rate is 16 times greater in the unvaccinated population than in those who are vaccinated. In areas where vaccinations have been lagging, hospitals have been hit especially hard. Alabama, Georgia, Texas, Florida, and Arkansas all have only about 10% of their ICU beds left. I had to turn away a, a cancer patient that needed an emergency treatment simply due to the fact that my hospital didn't have any beds. The number of pediatric cases are increasing and they are going to keep increasing. So according to this new Axios poll, the number of Americans saying that they are not very likely or at all likely to get a COVID-19 vaccine has dropped from 34 percent back in March to now just 20 percent. And in fact, that is a new low. The number of parents who say that they are likely to vaccinate their children has also risen by 12 points from just two weeks ago. A judge lifts an order for a local man to get the coronavirus vaccine. We told you about Brandon Rutherford's case earlier this month. He was going to be sentenced for a drug conviction, and the judge just asked him if he had been vaccinated. He said no, and the judge told him the vaccine was safer than the fentanyl that he had in his pocket. As a condition of his probation, the judge ordered Rutherford to get the vaccine. At a hearing today, that order was reversed. That story was quite a talker okay. when we first ran it. Local highways now turning into racetracks. Ohio State troopers say they're working to keep up with speeding drivers out there. Coming up, the dangerous trend that we're seeing more and more on our roads. Just ahead, now that the eviction moratorium is gone, Cincinnati City Council looks to help those who are still struggling. News of stealing from mourners at a northern Kentucky cemetery is now facing similar charges in Hamilton County. Montgomery police say that Travion Lust stole credit cards from three women at Gate of Heaven Cemetery. We told you about this arrest last week. Fort Mitchell police say that Lust stole from people at Highland Cemetery. Lusk and another man tried to drive off, but an employee closed that gate. Lust was arraigned in Hamilton County today. His bond was set at $70,000. It's a race against the clock for families facing homelessness. More people are struggling after the eviction moratorium is lifted. As Tessa DeTiro shows us, thousands of local families are stuck in a backlog for help, while the threat of homelessness becomes a scary reality. Just today in Hamilton County, 75 families were in court facing eviction. So somewhere between 25 and 30 families are getting evicted every day in Hamilton County. And when we have this kind of financial uh, assistance available, there's just no need for that. There's 50 to $70 million ready to help Cincinnati and Hamilton County families stay in their homes. But the system is overwhelmed. And what we oftentimes will hear from a uh, tenant who's not represented is that they've applied for rental assistance but don't know where they are in the process. The Community Action Agency says it got 750 calls for help on Monday. What keeps me up at night is folks that are struggling to get through because we just have so many people trying to reach us and we have 4,500 folks in our pipeline. The agency is understaffed right now and with a backlog that big and a need so great, the money isn't moving fast enough. Lawson says he just hired six new employees, but he told city council he needs more help. There's clearly a need for additional staff. Uh, we don't have as many people providing the support to get this money out the door as we need, and so that's got to be something we resolve very quickly. Job and Family Services has 700 pending cases. Tomorrow, both agencies are going to start calling people on the list before it's too late.
It's, it, it's so much cheaper for us as a community to help people who had income loss due to COVID, to just help them with a little bit of rent money instead of having them on the, in a shelter or on the street or doubled up. It just doesn't make sense during a pandemic. Tessa Tiro, Local 12 News. For the first time since the beginning of the pandemic, the Community Action Agency is going to be taking rental assistance appointments at its office. The agency also is going to travel with JFS to sign people up for help at the CMHA properties. A big party on the river that is coming up on Sunday. If you didn't know, folks, it comes <laughs> with a really good purpose as we prepare for Sunday's big fireworks show. The Purple People Bridge needs a little help coming up the plan to make sure it can be fixed. From t-shirts to Coney's, college athletes are raking in the cash. We're going to show you some of the gigs that local athletes are getting to make money off their names. Ohio State troopers say many drivers seem to have a lead foot. A trooper recently clocked a vehicle at 115 miles an hour. Man, this isn't the only speeder. Troopers say citations for going 100 miles plus in Ohio. They are up 37% from the same time last year. And this is a trend that the Highway Patrol started seeing last year. In 2019, there were 343 drivers ticketed for going more than 100 miles an hour. Last year, that number more than doubled. I don't even think my little Hyundai Elantra can get say, up to 100 you know miles an me, hour. I'd be so scared. It's Slow not it happening. Slow it down, no. folks. Slow it down. All right, we are just days away from the biggest fireworks display in the world. Well, the region anyway, right? <laughs> and you can still get one of the best seats in the house for the show. Mm. And in doing so, you can also help fully reopen a bridge. I saw the call this a win-win. Mm -hmm. It's part of a fundraiser called Boom on the Bridge. Local 12's mm -hmm. Christian Hauser shows us now where the money will go and how you and your friends or even your family, how you can all help out. The Purple People Bridge behind me has been partially closed since May. You can still walk up to a certain point from the Kentucky side, but here on the Ohio side, these gates prevent you from getting on the bridge at all. Now, there is a fundraiser during the WEBN Western and Southern Fireworks, which hopes to bring in enough money to make needed repairs and reopen the bridge. Jack Moreland is the chairman of the Newport South Bank Bridge Company. Job one now is to get the bridge open, but get it open safely. Here's the problem. Three rocks have fallen out of pier number one on the Ohio side. We're going to have to jack the bridge up. You can't do it without taking the bridge and raising it up. Well, certainly it takes a special jack to, to lift something the size of a bridge or a section of a bridge. A temporary fix for a few years is in the $30,000 price range while a permanent one, which Moreland says will last decades, is around $200,000. The group is hosting the fourth boom on the bridge. Three to 400 people will gather in this area for a VIP fireworks experience, and Moreland says the best view of the show. If you come out and be a part of boom on the bridge with us this year, then you're gonna be helping to get this temporary fix in place sooner than later. Moreland says previous years have raised around $25,000. He's hopeful between this year and some other donations, they can begin to fix the bridge in a month or two. The bridge has been closed long enough. And if we can have a legitimate way of opening the bridge and make sure that it's safe for everyone, we will do that in a heartbeat. Once that temporary fix is in place, the bridge will fully reopen. Now that could be as early as October. Organizers will then go about planning that long-term fix and how to pay for it. At the Purple People Bridge, Christian Hauser, Local 12 News. Oh, oh look at that. We're did you notice that Christian had a purple shirt on as well? Oh, you think he did that? Well, I'm gonna have we've to ask already him. been coordinating for the big night. <laughs> yes, join us on the river Sunday night for summer's last blast. The fun starts at 9 p.m. right here on Local 12. From Local 12. The Weather Authority. This is Chief Meteorologist John Gums, hour by hour forecast. Christian's purple popped there. That it was popped great. It. it did. It looked good. Hey, um, the weather's going to be a lot better for the fireworks come Sunday night. Not good weather tonight. So bad, in fact, the Reds have postponed tonight's game. They're going to do a double header tomorrow against the Cardinals. We've got rain coming in tonight, and that's affecting the drive home for a lot of people. That rain spreading from south to north. There's heavier pockets of rain that have developed to the north of Cincinnati tonight, but overnight and into early.
early tomorrow morning, areas along and east of I-71 will see the absolute heaviest rain, where one to three inches of rainfall will be possible. That could create some flooding in areas to the east and southeast of Cincinnati. A few showers linger early Wednesday morning, mainly east of town. Otherwise, we're bringing back the sun tomorrow, and it's going to be a little breezy with north winds around 10 to 15 miles per hour. There's the culprit. It is what's left of Ida, a tropical depression moving through middle Tennessee right now. This thing is going to make its way to the northeast up through eastern Kentucky and West Virginia. It does not pass over us. It's about 200 to 300 miles south of us right now, but it will be close enough to spread rain in here. And you can see all the flash flood watches that extend clear on down from Georgia up into portions of Massachusetts tonight. So this is going to be a big rainmaker for a lot of people. The heaviest rain, though, overnight is going to stay southeast of Cincinnati. So along and east of I-71, where the red shading is on this map, we've got a level three out of four risk for heavy rainfall overnight. So that's something we're going to watch. There's your flash flood watch that does cover our southern and eastern counties. That runs through noon tomorrow. And there's a look at Precision Doppler 12 HD.